Hi, this is Hospital Bhartia and welcome to another episode of TFI Let's See or Demos. And today we have with us once again, Mike Peterson, Senior Technical Marketing Engineer at Loft Labs. Mike, it's great to have you on the show. Hey, I'm going to show off DevPod today. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. So this is DevPod. What we're looking at right now are workspaces. Um, workspaces are GitHub repositories that we have linked up to a provider. So let me show you what a provider is too. So a provider is something like Docker or Kubernetes or any of these providers. Plus there's a, the ability to add a custom and other providers if you don't see what you're using here. So like say you want to use like AWS as a provider, what that'll do is launch a virtual machine, install Docker, and then we'll be able to run the workspace in there. But let's go ahead and walk through the workspace uh, demo since we already have a couple of providers. Right now I've got a provider of a uh, Docker that's running locally. And then I got a Kubernetes uh, server that's actually running in a server um, in my house. So let's create a new workspace. So what we'll start out with is a quick starts uh, example. So we're going to run um, a Python example. It's just github.com, Microsoft VS Code, remote try Python. So it's just a basic environment where we can test uh, bringing up VS Code with this. So we're going to create the workspace uh, with the provider of Docker. And our IDE we're going to use is VS Code. So basically, we just hit Create Workspace. This this GitHub repository could be something that you're working on. Um, it could be anything you know besides this. This is just the, uh, the example one. All right, so create a workspace. And what that's going to do is it's going to create the dev container for us. It's going to download the dev pod agent because all of these, all of these things in the UI are backed up by a CLI. So you can do a lot of this stuff uh, on the command line too, which I'll show after, after uh, we show this off. And what this is going to bring, what it's going to do is it's going to bring up VS code and it's going to bring up that repository for us. And as soon as it comes up, all right. So what it's doing is it, it's bringing up a container and in Docker and it's setting up a SSH, uh, setting up SSH to it. So it's going to SSH into it. Um, and then we're going to be able to see our repository over here and we'll make some changes. Okay. So right now we've got, um, we've got the Python application, uh, open and it's just a, like I said, just an example, uh, an example application. So it's just a default, like Flask app and it's just serving up, you know, VS code can do that. Yes, it can. So what we can do is we can, you know, run the application. And what that's going to do is it's going to port forward for us. So this is running in Docker locally, but it could be running in Kubernetes or something like that. It'll it'll port forward for us so that we can we can look at our changes um, on our local machine. So say I open this up in a browser. All right, so we can actually see you know real time changes too. So if we go in here and we say it's even better with Dev Pod and save, go over here and refresh, then we can see it's even better with Dev Pod shows up, um, and that's just showing that. We can make changes and and they'll be saved uh, within the container. Now, if once we're done, we can just close out uh, VS Code. We can go back to DevPod and we can see that it's running currently here. So what we can do is we can stop it, um, and then we want to work on it again later in in uh, Docker. We can do that. We can just hit open and it'll open back up. But let's create let's create the same thing. But say we want to do it now in a Kubernetes um, cluster instead of doing it locally. So we'll do Python. We'll pick a provider of Kubernetes. We'll use VS Code as our default IDE, and then we'll create a workspace. And what this is going to do is it's actually going to run it in my Kubernetes instance that's um, up down in my basement. And then this is just going to run in a pod, and it's going to have a container created for it. And then what we can do is basically the same thing as what we're doing in Docker, but we're doing it in Kubernetes. So say you've got you know access to Kubernetes clusters, and you want to run there instead of running locally, like you want faster faster tests or something like that, or you want a little bit more power than your laptop has. This is a great way to do that. All right, we'll wait a second. All right, now it's coming up. See the pods coming up right now. And then once it's up, it'll set up a uh, remote connection into it. And then it'll be just like Docker. So this is running, like I said, not on my local machine. This is running somewhere else. All right, let's trust. All right, let's open up the same stuff that we had open in the other one. And you see this is this is empty. Um, we haven't, there's no updates here because this is actually a brand new, you know, container with a different state than the one we were running in Docker. Let's go ahead and run the application again. And then we can say even on Kubernetes and then save this. And then we can open this and our changes are there. So this was running Kubernetes. The other one was running in Docker. Um, we can 
you know, go between the two that when we want to work uh, in a different environment. And then we also have other providers um, that you can add in. Say you don't, you don't want to work off of Docker or Kubernetes and you want to work off of AWS. Well, in AWS, what it's going to do is it's going to create a virtual machine. And then on that virtual machine, it'll install Docker. And then it'll use the same uh, dev container configuration to bring up your environment there. So what you would do is just add an AWS provider. You would put in, you would put in your, um, your region, and then you would go down to options and put in your access key ID, your secret access key ID. Um, and if you want to use a specific AMI, you could use that. And then you can say what, you know, instance type you want to use. So you can use something, you know, smaller or much larger. And then say you want to use like a graphics card or something like that. You could, you could do something like that too. Like say you have, um, development that needs a graphics card to test stuff out. Like maybe like, uh, you know, doing some, uh, inference. There's also a command line for dev pods. So you can do a lot of this, uh, via the command line, which, uh, makes it a little bit easier to automate some of the setup and the configuration. So if we go to the CLI, we can do dev pod and we can see a bunch of the commands. We can say dev pod list, and that'll show us the different things that we're running and the repositories that are connected to them. We can do dev pod provider list, and that'll show us the different providers we've got set up. We have Docker and Kubernetes running, uh, looks like Azure's an alpha. Um, and then we can also uh, start what we have running. So we can say dev pod up, and then we can do dev pod Docker, which is one of the things that I have running. And what that'll do is bring up the dev pod um, GitHub repository in VS Code, which is my default IDE. We also have multiple other IDEs that you can use if you looked at when we created a workspace. So say you're, you know, Goland, PyCharm, or any of these other ones, you can use that. Um, we've got VS Code in the browser, which I can show that off to real quick. Uh, let's go back and we'll create a works. Okay, we'll start from here. We'll create a workspace. We'll create a Go workspace and we'll go to the VS Code browser. We'll put this in Docker and create workspace. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna bring up a different ID than we've been using. Our default is VS Code, but like I said, you could run it in a browser if you want to instead, or you can use a uh, different provider or different um, IDEs like GoLand or whatever, you know, whatever your favorite are from uh, like JetBrains. All right, so it's gonna take a minute just cause it's a new one. All right, and now VS Code's coming up in a browser, and there we go. Same, same deal. Um, so you can use whatever you want to use. You can use a browser if you want to. Uh, maybe eventually we'll have an iPad app, and you can develop from your iPad. But right now everything is is a uh, is desktop stuff. And that's pretty much the demo, um, showing off like the CLI and and all that stuff. Why would someone? prefer DevPod versus, you know, other solutions out there? So DevPod is agent only, so you don't have to install something on a remote server or anything like that to get this running. Um, I think that's one of the, one of the downsides maybe of some of the other options out there is that the platform team and stuff, you know, defines where you want to run this, where say you're just a developer and you want to run, you know, locally in, in Docker, or you want to run on a Kubernetes cluster, you have running or you have access to, you know, AWS or cloud resources. You can run this anywhere without having an agent already in, or without having something already installed server side. So basically, it's it's agent driven. Um, also, it's open source. So if you want to write your own provider and you know make customizations for that, you could do that. Um, and I mean, it's, it's pretty new. So hopefully, like hopefully, the development of this continues to make it easier for users, you know, to use something like this. Of course, we have seen how it works. Uh, now, can you also share with us, you know, how folks can get started with uh, DevPod? Okay, yeah, yeah. So you can go to devpod.sh and that's gonna give you links to GitHub. Um, it's gonna have a video and other information about like how to use DevPod. Um, uh, DevPod's on our GitHub too. It's actually uh, right here, github.com uh, um, loft-sh DevPod. Uh, you can go there too, star it, you know, take a look at it, get get it running. But if you go to devpod.sh, that's going to give you a way to install and, and get started. And it'll, it'll give you a link to the docs. If you have questions or you need help or anything like that, just join our, our Slack, um, slack.loft.sh and join the DevPod channel. And we're in there and we can help out if you run into any problems or open um, open something in GitHub, like open a, create an issue or something like that if you run into any problems. Mike, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, show us, you know, how DevPod works. And I would love to chat with you again soon. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you.